harsh, unpredictable, and ravenous. Who'd ever think we'd be speaking about emus? And who would have thought that emus, the unofficial national birds of Australia, appearing on its coat of arms, would face humans at war? Welcome to Calculated Chaos, where we do mini docs on the nostalgic, the noteworthy, and the nonsensical. Today, we'll be talking about the Emu War, or the Great Emu War, that was fought between humans and emus in 1932. It was a serious attempt to curb the number of emus going berserk and damaging crops in the Campion District of Western Australia. As you already know from the name of the video, the war was unsuccessful. Humans failed to bring down the emu population, making it the only official war against animals that humans lost. It all started after World War I ended. Australian soldiers who returned from the war had to resume their everyday lives. Most Australian soldiers who participated in the war were commoners such as farmers, shepherds, and other men who had led pretty basic lives before the war. Australian government struggled to find things that their veterans could do. In those circumstances, the government rolled out a soldier settlement scheme across all states so nearly 5,030 ex-soldiers were given plots of land so that they could cultivate wheat and raise sheep. Many soldiers were allocated lands in some marginal areas of Perth and Western Australia, and the grounds were barely usable. Obviously, the veterans were not very happy. To make it even worse, the Great Depression hit in 1929, triggering a drastic wheat price downfall. The government promised wheat subsidies to pacify hard-pressed veterans, but those aid packages never saw the light of day. But one thing made the situation impossible to stand, the original angry bird, the emu. The emu is the second largest living bird on earth. It stands six feet tall and weighs upwards of 100 pounds. Its stature is slightly smaller than its African cousin, the ostrich. Like ostriches, they cannot fly, but can sprint up to an impressive 50 kilometers an hour, thanks to a set of powerful legs. These legs are almost the strongest of any animal, capable of tearing down metal fences and fending off dingoes, their natural predators, by jumping and stamping them on their way down. The emu is highly intelligent. Emus hunt and travel in packs, adapt to environments, and survive in one of the most severe climates on Earth, the wilds of Australia. The hungry birds ransacked crops, tore down fences, and soaked up water to survive. Emus are native to Midwestern Australia, a habitat largely unperturbed by humanity. Until 1922, the birds were a protected native species in Australia, but things changed. Soldier settlements were built at the expense of emu habitats, naturally forcing them to begin feeding on crops. With their giant webbed feet and duck-like black bills, emus trampled and sheared off crops right when the harvest was ready. Emus came in huge numbers and ate standing crops down to the stub, ravaging farmers' crops and destroying their livelihood. By late 1932, approximately 20,000 emus had migrated to the newly cultivated lands to devour the plentiful resources. This was a critical situation that farmers couldn't just ignore. At first, the ex-military farmers started shooting emus. They also tried poisoning and trapping, but it was met with limited success. Even after hundreds of dead mighty birds, farmers couldn't dent their ever-growing numbers. A delegation of Western farmers went to Canberra, where they asked for help from the government to fight the emu menace. The farmers had plenty of reasons to confront those in power. In previous years, Canberra had made them grow wheat and promised it would ease the burden of the depression. Parliament even pledged to subsidize the crop, but it hadn't. The delegation of soldier settlers cornered Australian Defense Minister George Pierce and demanded help fighting these angry birds. Veterans wanted nothing less but machine guns. The minister agreed to send the weapons, but only under the condition that soldiers, not veterans, would operate them. That's how the eradication of the emu became an official military operation. Major GPW Meredith, commander of the Royal Australian Artillery 7th Heavy Battery, led the mission. Armed with 10,000 rounds of ammo and two Lewis guns, a small army went to the district of Campion to kill a bunch of emus. Major Meredith was confident he'd bring a cinematographer to capture his imminent success. They arrived in early October, but a sudden torrential rain scattered the birds and scrapped the operation. Nature blessed the farmers and helped them solve the water problem, but didn't help them with the birds. The soldiers returned later in the month. On November 2nd, my birthday by the way, okay. Meredith and his men camped in Campion, fighting a flock of 50 emus. Local settlers shot the herd with the artillery, but the emus split into small groups and ran, evading the barrage of machine guns. 
it became obvious the open warfare was useless as the birds employed guerrilla tactics and were lightning fast with their retreat. What's worse, their tough feathers and blind panic made them almost immune to bullets. In fact, it took more than 10 bullets to kill just one bird. One veteran shared his emotions, there's only one way to kill an emu. Shoot him through the back of the head when his mouth is closed or through the front when his mouth is open. That's how hard it is. The day after the army established an ambush near a local dam, the water source for over 1,000 emus. With renewed patience, the soldiers waited when the birds were in point-blank range. At merely 100 yards, they fired. Light work for soldiers, right? Not really. Thousands of rounds were fired, but fewer than a dozen emu were killed. Emus scattered as soon as the human forces began firing and were out of gun sight before anyone had a chance to reload. Apparently, the herd had developed their understanding of military science, much to the army's dismay. Each mob has its leader, an enormous black-plumed bird standing fully six feet high who keeps watching while his fellows busy themselves with the wheat. At the first suspicious sign, he gives the signal and dozens of heads stretch out from the crop. A few birds will take fright, starting headlong stampede from the scrub, the leader always remaining until his followers have reached safety. The birds were more intelligent and faster than anticipated. They were so fast that they were often out of range of the machine guns before the soldiers could aim and fire. Meredith needed to get the weapons close and keep them close, so he mounted a Lewis onto one of the farmer's trucks. It didn't work either. When weighed down by the gunner and his 30 pound weapon, the vehicles were slow and couldn't keep up with the emus. Plus the bumpy ride made it impossible to aim. No soldier fired a shot in the truck operation, but one industrious farmer did use his vehicle to run down a slow emu. However, the hit and run backfired when the emu smashed through the car and tangled itself in the steering wheel. The truck went off the road and plowed through several feet of the fence before stopping. The first humiliating attempt to call the numbers of emus failed. Mixed with a lot of negative media coverage, this made the government pull out the military from the affected regions. Representatives had to roll collective eyes and deem the war a lost cause. The Minister of Defense withdrew the army on November 8th, putting the emu fiasco to an end. And that's how the first battle was lost. But it was merely the first attempt. A second try was made on November 13, 1932. Although the local press was furious at the soldiers, the farmers protested, so Meredith and his army boys went back to war. The commander returned reports to Canberra about the devastation he brought to the birds. According to Meredith, nearly 1,000 emu died after his men fired off their ammunition, with 2,500 more dying from injuries. However, these claims are impossible to verify. Observers estimated the number of dead emu from 100 to 1,000. Possibly Meredith inflated the numbers, but the world may never know. Since it took no less than 10 bullets to bring down a single emu, the government decided it wasn't worth it. The commander, army boys, and Lewis machine guns retreated at the beginning of December, leaving the farmers to stand against the emu by themselves. Emus won again, and the Great Emu War of Australia was officially over. However, their numbers did drop drastically over the next six months, thanks to the government providing locals with ammunition to solve the problem by themselves, veterans did it with great success. Even so, emus made a place for themselves in the hearts of many people for their exceptional maneuverability, even when wounded, tactical intelligence, and sheer bravery. Major Meredith, the army leader in the emu war, said this about his opponents. If we had a military division with the bullet carrying capacity of these birds, it would face any army in the world. They can meet machine guns with the invulnerability of tanks. They're like Zulus, whom even dum dum bullets, the ones that expand upon impact, could not stop. But what do you guys think about the Great Emu War? Who would you guys have been brooding for? Let us know in the comment section below. And while you're down there, why not tell us what video you'd like us to cover next? We hope you enjoyed today's video, hit like if you did, and don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more such content. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.